Record, eh? That's it, record. <laughs> so, there we go. Right, people. Uh, we've got another artist introducing for Dougie Stone Radio, and it's the amazing Black Star Jackals. Well, one of the Jackals, anyway. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right, Kirk. Thanks for having us on. Or just me on, I should say. Yeah, introduce yourself so everyone knows who you are in the, in the band. Uh, I'm Stephen. I'm the lead guitarist in the band. And the other members are Kieran on vocals, uh, Max on bass, and Callum on drums. But they're all uh, earning a living right now, so I'm the only <laughs> one who's here to talk. I know, it's a bit, a bit tough. And just for the benefit of everyone there, if for some reason he has to jump away, he's expecting someone to turn up at his studio, so uh, we will we will just see what happens throughout the show. <laughs> but uh, thanks for coming on, because I don't know if you remember, but I met I met the band at the O2 Soundwave Awards in Birmingham. Oh, uh, yeah, we remember, for sure, yeah. Yeah, and that... that... One of our earliest uh, supporters, I guess, in a way, like, you know, you... You were one of the first radio stations to play us back in the day. Um, so, you know, you're one of the OG Black Star Jackal fans. There you go, there before everybody else. No, I loved what I loved about that, I'm not sure who's, I'm not sure if it was uh, Kieran's mum, but someone was at still, there's a lot of people there. You can tell the family's there. And they were going down for 11 and went, Is that your mum? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know who it was. So he's brilliant. It's, it, Kieran's mum is definitely um, our number one fan. She's great. She comes to like every gig and like she's super supportive. She's really sweet. Excellent, excellent. I, I can't find the video. I've got the video somewhere. I don't know what I've done with it. I'll have to find it. it was, we had an interview at the bar, didn't we? It was really not loud, but it was good. And and see, we'll get into the rest of it, but that, that was interesting for me because I could tell um the disappointment on your guy on you on your faces because your gig your set was awesome and it was a tough one that because there's some really good bands on and i could i could sense a disappointment in the band when you didn't win i could definitely sense it yeah i mean it, it was it wasn't like we were we were gutted when you enter a competition you have to sort of in a way expect not to win so you you, you know so you're not you don't want to build your hopes up too much yeah and it was so varied and like you know it was there was everything from like you know solo, you know R and B type acts all the way up to bands with dancers and saxophones and like there was us like a rock band in between. So it really was a yeah. case of you know whatever the judges liked the most was going to win. So we weren't you know we were just we were just happy to be there. Really, it was our it was our first gig outside of Scotland and it was kind of cool to be doing it in a venue like the Birmingham O2 so yeah I thought um, I thought you were great I really said since, since that day and that's why every every time you've released any music or done anything we've been sharing it we put it on the shows um I just like the stage presence I like the vibe that you know everything about the band was was wonderful you're right because that how do you pick the best band of the night from that it's not as if it was you know loads of rock bands or indie bands or or reggae bands it was a total mishmash of different you know there was like say there's a guy from london wasn't there what's his name um uh kai brilliant singer but how do you how do you put that against you guys do you know what i mean it just doesn't it's and then you got the real heavy uh there was a couple of bands on towards the end of the night i had to go out it was just absolutely <laughs> i my ears were nearly bleeding they were that loud weren't they got them yeah. you got, anyway there's they were they were they were uh they were they were up there oh we need to say happy saint patrick's day to everyone as well then we forgot about that on this morning show so uh, oh, if yeah. you're listening on the back on the back uh, thing but because you're from scotland hey you're scottish so it doesn't matter does it? <laughs> well i'm not i'm scouse but um the so I'm the odd one out. I'm the I'm the only English one in the band. Funnily enough, maybe wow. it was maybe it was appropriate that I came on to speak to an English radio station. I don't know. Oh, but, um, no, not really. But, but you know, but, 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 I'm an, I'm an honorary, honorary but, Scot. We're international. Um, we're international. We're all right. Yeah. We've let bygones be bygones. You're bilingual. You speak you speak Glaswegian as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, look, I've been to Scotland a few, a few times now, and I love it. We were there last year in. Uh, doing a bike tour and it was wonderful and the people were really i was surprised actually they were very friendly receptive to us and uh what a great place to go can't wait to go again so yeah. so what got you to get get how did you end up in scotland then oh me um my other half and i were both musicians and we just um we were studying at the well i was at the royal college of music and she was at the royal academy of music in london um, we graduated a few years earlier and then she got offered a job in BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra. So we had to up sticks from South London and uh, been in Glasgow ever since, basically, because of her job. So, you know, it wasn't in the life plans. I started mm. in Liverpool and then I lived in Manchester for 
six or eight years. Then I moved down to London for five years, and now I'm in Glasgow. So yeah. I'm getting around, I'm getting around. Yeah, I've done something similar. I've lived in Holland, all over Yorkshire, everywhere, uh, apart from Scotland. I'd say what we'll do, we normally start off with a track. There's, there's hopefully some questions coming in. One's here, who influences your late influence, so you can, we can chat about that afterwards. Uh, I've got a few tracks lined up. Um, so we're going to we're going to cue the, the video for everyone out there. So drop some questions in, and we'll come right back. And hopefully, we'll still be here. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll ask our questions. But anyway, here's the video. Watch this. This is uh, Party People. I think we played this morning on uh, on the show. Take it away, boys. Yeah. 
people. If you wasn't away before the show, you are now. And I just need to say, I just make apologise. If you're expecting to be listening to Rob Levick on the radio on uh, Thursday, I've overtaken it to do this, but an hour of his show will be following this. So, wonderful. I love that. I, I'll just... The, the guitar, the guitar riff in that is fantastic. You know, towards the end, I like that. Go for it there, don't you? Go for it. Yeah, it's funny watching that video back. It gives me um, traumatic memories. Really? <laughs> because... Um, I filmed and edited that video myself um, without really knowing what I was doing. We just hired a studio and I had this cheap DSLR camera. Wow. I just set up on, um, we only had one camera and they set it on a tripod and we had to shoot from loads and loads of different angles oh. over and over and over and over again. Oh, and um, the camera eventually just ran out of battery halfway through one of the shots we didn't even realize, which is quite funny. Oh. And then um, I bought this um, super expensive editing software i had no idea what i was doing with it It was like just i was looking at it just like blank face and spent weeks and weeks just on youtube with all these tutorials and stuff just sort of fudging my way through and then ended up by accident discovering this really cool effect i thought that's kind of cool and then i just sort of ran with it and then before i knew it i was creating this monster of a video with millions of edits and effects. And like, if you could see the sort of, you know, workflow yeah, on the yeah. screen, there was just thousands and thousands of tiny little, like, you know, fractions of clips. And each of those clips would maybe take me like 10 or 15 minutes to do. I remember it took me about two weeks nonstop to make that video. And um, I said after that, I said, guys, we're not doing that again. <laughs> so since then, it's been like just one shot videos. I'm like, I'm not doing that again. Well, a couple of things. Well done, because that's a brilliant video. Uh, oh, you've, you've obviously... It's a great lesson, because uh, I always watch... If I watch videos of anything, a stop motion, don't have to be music videos, I always sit there and go, oh, my God, that's took them, that's took them ages to do that. Because I've done... I started off doing video editing, self-taught. No, right. self and it's it's luckily with e this sort of stuff, I just do a one take and that's it, it just goes up. But when you've got to start putting stuff together, it's it's hard work. And especially to get it look looking good, it, it's 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 frustrating, isn't it? Yeah, the worst part was my computer just couldn't handle it. It couldn't no. handle the software. My, I had to end up um my well, I was doing it on my laptop and that just died, kept dying. So I ended up buying this big like window second hand Windows tower. I'm not like a really a Windows person, and that couldn't handle it either. So I ended up having to get like another. So the amount of money I forked out on this flipping video, <laughs> just to get, just so the software could actually run on the computer without crashing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's it's, oh. it's very hungry on um, on memory. That's why I to upgrade my my studio stuff. I've got a decent uh, MacBook, but. Uh, no, no good for streaming. No good for doing video editing. Like I say, just yeah. gr and you can hear it whining, can't whining. Uh, yeah, it's not good at all. Not good. <clears throat> yeah, brilliant vocals. I love, I love his vocals. Kieran's vocals are quite un unique, aren't they? I, I yeah, he's got a great voice. I, when I first met you, when I saw you on the stage and everything, and obviously you knew reasonable, but I wouldn't have put him in Scottish. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't sound. There's no. There's no sound of Scot Scot Scotland there. If you know, if that makes sense to me, anyway. Well, well yeah, we're, we're not doing the Biffy Claro thing of you know singing with a, a Scottish accent. Um, like his um, his influences in particular. He's massive Dave Grohl fan. Loves like Food <laughs> right, Fighters okay. and Nirvana. I'm not, I'm not laughing at you. Go on, I'll tell you in a minute. Yeah, uh, he loves Chili's. Um, yeah and Incubus and bands like that, and um, Soundgarden, he's a massive Chris oh, Cornell yeah. fan yeah, as well. Yeah. And I think you can definitely hear that 90s twang in the in the way he sort of sings and pronounces words. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of, we, both Kieran and I are massively influenced by similar bands, you know, all those 90s bands um, like Rage Against Machine and... System of a Down and Muse and um, all these other stuff and Chili's in particular. Yeah. In fact, we're going to see the Chili's when they come to Glasgow in a few months' time. Excellent. Um, and you know, it obviously just sort of seeps in to his vocals and seeps into the the music, whether we're aware of it or not. Yeah, it's bro absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it, it, it did grab me when when I first heard him singing, and uh, yeah, it's great. It's good, absolutely brilliant. So, what's gone on since then? Because that was 2019, I think. Uh, that was one of the first, well, not the, but like that was maybe like the fifth gig we'd ever done was the really? final of that competition. Yeah. We started, our first gig was, the very first gig was the first round of that competition in March. Wow. And that was with a different drummer as well. Um, yeah, we we kind of just 
went for it. We got together at the sort of start of 2019, um, had a few songs ready, and we just the deadline for this competition was there. So we just went for it. And before we knew it, we were in the Scottish final. Um, I think we had to play every song we knew in that final. <laughs> it was only about three songs. We had to play all of them basically in the final. Wow. And we were just very wet behind the ears. But yeah, from that that um, gig in Birmingham was one of the first gigs we've ever done. I, dread, I mean, we don't want to watch those videos again. We dread to think what we looked and sound like now, then compared to now. I'll, fi- um, I'll find them and put them on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll flag I've, them for copyright, but, get them down. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you probably would do as well. I've had that a few times. But I've... Um, yeah, I, I would never have said that. You never come over as being a um, a brand new band on and there. Ne- never, never. I would have never put you down as just just forming. So yeah, well, we weren't. We we're all experienced before we even in the band. Like Kieran was in another band before this band, right? Um, and he did before we. I'm a, I would, I'm already like a professional musician, and I've been doing this for years. Max was, you know, he's studying music in college and Callum's been in bands and stuff. So we weren't like, you know, a bunch of teenagers in our yeah. first ever band. We we kind of knew what we were doing. So we were able to sort of quickly cut to the chase in that sense. And that's one of the things that set us apart from other bands in the sense that we haven't had to go through that teething stage of, you know, being a bit crap for a few years. Like, yeah. you know, you hear stories of like Blondie back in the early, like back in the early 70s playing in, CBGBs or something and apparently for years they were absolutely terrible <laughs> so they had to grind it out getting better but we've kind of done all that already on our own yeah and we were quite you know we like to think of ourselves as quite slick and professional Definitely. in terms of our stage presence um but yeah in terms of what's been going on since well since then since 2019 I mean obviously there's the c word um yeah. we'll, we'll leave that out of it um yeah we've released Lots of new singles since Party People. That one we just heard. I think we've released was it two or three new singles? I can't remember now. Yeah, um, well, must be two new singles. Yeah, easy, um, easy. And we're currently in talks with a label, um, a London-based label. Not no one. It's not Universal or UMG or anything like that. But like a nice indie label that we think would be suited for us, and mm. that would be a nice step for us to sort of you know have someone helping us out instead we're, we're very much our own outfit yeah. at the moment um and our first gig of 2022 is tomorrow Ooh. actually funny enough it's in the same place that we did our last gig oh, which was wow. in um, a place called the garage on socky hall street in, Gar- in in glasgow um we're supporting a band called the uh they're called the usual suspects and royal bloom is the other one Royal Bloom, very dangerously close to another band, but well, yep. <laughs> and it's all good because all the ticket sales are going to the Ukrainian crisis charity, so it's for a good cause. Nice. So, if anyone listening is in about the Glasgow area, if you fancy a, a night of loud, rowdy music, all for a good cause, and come on down for uh, definitely go, definitely yeah. go because the view it's wonderful. And obviously, we'll be playing a few more tracks, and uh, anyway, and, and people will, will, will know that. There was, there was a question. Oh, there's always a question I get. I, I have to ask, and he's not on at the minute. But he'll, I said I'd ask it this morning. This is, you know, this is really, really cutting edge stuff. Do yeah. you think <laughs> king size pot noodles should have king size sachets of sauce, not the little ones that they put in the normal one? That's the question from our reggae uh, uh, presenter. That every time. That's a no brainer, isn't it? Of course they should. There you go. It's, it's all got a match. So we've, 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 yeah. got to, we've got to do that. Eddie's not on in the minute, but he always asks, have you got a tour van? So do you tour in a van or do you just all pile up in different cars? No, no. We um, we haven't done a tour yet. <laughs> so we even need a tour van. Um, the state of affairs right now, with the, like, the whole music industry and our situation would mean that touring right now, it wouldn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, usually it's just a couple of cars. Um, and unfortunately... And one of them doesn't drive, so he just gets to be a passenger. Oh, great. And, you know, we did a gig. We did Monster Fest up in Inverness at the end of um, last year. And that's a good, what's that, like four and a half, five hour drive there. And um, I we got a bit too um, bit too merry on the Saturday night after the gig. In fact, a lot too merry. Oh, no. And uh, I was got a bit too merry myself. And on the Sunday morning driving back to Glasgow, it took seven hours. <laughs> Because I had to keep stopping on the hard shoulder to oh, um, 
Yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. Just take a let's break. Just say, take a take a breather. Yeah. <laughs> Get some, breather. I need some air lads again. But and, uh, it, I, that's always a surprise. I think people when they look at Scotland think, oh, yeah, Glasgow, Inverness, oh, it'll be all right. You know, I mean, it's, it's not. It's 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 immense, isn't it? It's massive. Scotland. It's the same. It's taste about. I can get to Birmingham as fast as I can get to Inverness oh, from Glasgow. It's crazy. We was on the back yeah. tour last year up there, and we went all round. You know, we did about two thousand miles, I think, in the end. And um, it was every day hundred not hundred not two hundred miles a day riding. You know what I mean? It was it's nuts. It's a it's, big country. Yeah, it's excellent. It's and it's beautiful. Because well. on the weather maps, it's tilted. You know, so there's that perspective. It looks smaller than it is. Yeah. You need to look at it when it's like flat on. It's about the same same length as England. It's huge, huge. Well, you're right though, because we we could get to France quicker than we've got could get up to uh, parts of Scotland. It's yeah. just nuts. So Janice is asked, uh, "What does your music mean to the band? Are there any hidden messages?" So I don't know if she's meaning generally or just certain tracks i don't know so there's definitely a theme with our music because most of the if not all of the lyrics well most of them are written by kieran yeah and he's big on his mental health and mental health awareness he's had a few um tragedies tragedies in his um in his youth yeah um that you know obviously are the inspiration for a lot of his songs and they tend to be our music tends to be a bit of like a juxtaposition between quite upbeat sort of you know upbeat instrumentals when you actually listen to the words that are being said though they're quite dark um quite brooding quite you know quite sad in some cases so um in the case of a song like um just for fun for example our latest single um i mean it's called just for fun and you think, oh, it must be a happy song. It sounds like quite a happy song, but when you actually read the lyrics, um, it it ha- takes on a different meaning. We don't, we're not, we're not keen necessarily on saying this song means this. Yeah. Um, which a lot of you know magazines and pluggers they like to say, tell us what the song means. It's like, well, it, it kind of means whatever you want it to mean. Yeah, um, I think that's good. And, I think that's yeah. good. If you leave it to the list, the the audience or the listener to to interpret their own way if you say oh it's about i don't know this mm-hmm. yeah uh you know yeah. split up with my girlfriend then then it doesn't apply but actually the lyrics might fit to losing the job or something else or whatever so um i think that's quite quite good if you leave a bit of mystery well i had that to play later on but as you've been talking about i think we'll have that now uh your latest single just for fun if that's all right with you that's fine with us here we go black star jackals people mm-hmm. 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 So we bit dancey, so don't be afraid of me, she's not move. It's called Just For Fun.
have that. Have that. I tell you what. Stunning. Stunning. Absolutely stunning track. I love that, man. I love it. Wonderful. Well, bring if, if just keep bringing them out like that, we'll, we'll be happy, won't we? <laughs> it's a bit different to our other stuff, that one. Um, it's a lot more sort of indie and upbeat than our other stuff. So yeah, that, that... we were kind of curious to see how people responded to it. I love it. It's just yeah. infectious, that track. I just love it to bits. And uh, yeah, we've played a lot. I've played it a few times already. And, and uh, yeah, it's it's a grower, definitely a grower. It's one of them that gets you straight away, but then, no, oh, you've really get to... It's fun. It's a fun track. If you don't listen yeah, to it, you know Yeah, live, I mean? it's, it's one of the most fun tracks to play live. Mm. Um because it's even like heavier and just obviously way louder live and we go a bit nuts with it and that's kind of the reason behind the video using just live footage all of that stuff in the video is just a basically a montage that i put together of various fans and family members filming on their phones from yeah concerts and gigs spanning three years actually it's one of our earlier songs the uh, just for fun kieran had written it before i was even in the band right but it sounds a lot different now to what it did to begin with. Like we we performed it in the final of oh, the really? Scottish Soundwaves, um, and we probably performed it in the um, the Birmingham one as well. Funnily enough, um, but the version we performed back then is a bit different to the version we actually recorded. We we pushed the tempo up, we changed the key, we added in some new guitar riffs, we um, added took stuff out, added stuff in. We just up the energy like mm. 10 times basically because it was it, it was all right but we just felt like oh it needs it needs something so we just went well it's got it anyway the max <laughs> whatever you wanted to have it's got it it's wonderful it's brilliant it's a brilliant uh brilliant track i love i love i've loved all the tracks you've released and they are you have they are different if you listen over the time there's just, there's a different vibe with them but that, that that that's a great track that's a really good track i mean the first track i heard was maybe which that's similar to maybe that track i believe so it's yeah like, it's well they're both like happy both in major keys so that yeah. kind of puts together they're both like upbeat happy um tunes uh but yeah i mean one of the things that we try to do is not repeat ourselves or not sound the same hmm. um it's almost a conscious effort even if it's something as simple as like let's not release two songs that are in the same key um, because God knows there are so many bands, you heard one of their songs, you've heard all of them. Um, <laughs> AC DC is a classic, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but the, the thing with AC DC, that one song is bloody good. So <laughs> when know, they release so, it over and over again. Yeah, we said that. It, oh, it yeah. just sounds like the rest of them. But do you know what? There's nothing wrong with that because we like it. But yeah, it's, it's good if you, if you. And you never know by changing it that you'll find something that really you know, do you know what I mean I'm not saying any of them are not good but you might find something that yeah, as you keep doing it you'll you know you'll improve it won't you and then it's you know like you've improved that track um, yeah and it's still really early days for us we you know we've only been going three years and, mm. and if you take COVID out of the equation it's probably barely even two yeah um, and we're still finding our sound and still learning what, what we are as a band and what our sound is and things like that so yeah who knows in like five years time we might not sound anything like this i mean we kind of hope so we kind of hope that in five years time we don't sound anything like what we did now and then five years after that we sound different. you know the bands that influence us they influence us because they evolved um they have their signature sound but yeah you think of you know biggest band for me is the beatles yeah and you know well no no band's ever evolved more than the beatles so um yes. not comparing us to the beatles but i'm just trying to say in terms of like evolving our sound and not repeating ourselves that's yeah. something we like to try and do i, I think it's key and I, and I think the band that you talked about madonna uh, not madonna but blondie madonna is a classic <laughs> Um, yeah, who's, who's changed? You know, she's she's evolved from the pop from the eighties, and then all different sort of formats. And the the artists that I believe that that do endure tend to do that, don't they? Some there's some exceptions, but the ones that evolve and change because they'll change with the uh, the taste of the time. So okay, you just got to keep doing it. So what's the is the ultimate aim? Because you said the the rest of the rest of the band are actually grafting today in an honest coin. Um, I, is the is the plan to get off the rat race and and just do music? Oh, for sure. I mean, that's the dream. But there's no plan. I want to say there's a plan. In place. You can't plan this thing. Um, obviously, we would love 
to be doing what the likes of Foo Fires and Don Broco and yeah. Biffy are doing and all that sort of stuff. Because, um, you know, no one wants... We, we want to make a living from playing music. We're not, we don't care if we make loads of money or just enough money, but obviously that's the dream. The The issue is um, achieving it and it's, you know, without me to be too downtrodden on it it's too it's it's really difficult now mm. um in many people go on about it's easier than ever and it's like yeah it is it's easy never to get your music out there it's easy never to be heard by millions of people um but it's harder than ever to actually make a living from it because yeah. you know music is pretty devalued these days um the only way you can really make money is from like selling merch and um, if you're lucky, ticket sales and things like that. So, you know, whether people are aware of it or not, like the, the bands in particular are gradually getting sort of killed off just due to the financial yeah. um, situation, basically. You know, none of us have got rich mums and dads. We have to work for a living, which, you know, means we haven't got time to work on stuff in the band and... I don't know. I don't. I don't want to get too sort of um, no, that, whiny it, about it. No, it's it's a good point, and it's sometimes we mm. ask we ask people a question because you're right. I, I think the, the the market's flooded as well, isn't it? Because you've got it is the accessibility is a lot easier to get out there. But like you say, it, it's great that we can you know you can I can pick this up and I can listen to anything, virtually anything, which is mm. great. But the downside is. Back in the day, if you you know whatever you you you've, you've got streamed on Spotify, you know you've probably got a few quid from that because of just from your record sales. Um, it, it, it's a it's a tough one. It's a tough one. It's one reason why I want to do some of these shows, and we do and we've changed uh, one of our shows on a Thursday, which sort of showcases more of the bands coming through, and uh, for obviously people to get to know them, hopefully go and support them because that's what they need. It's, it's great streaming your music but the, you want the gigs full don't you you want someone buying your t-shirts and your baseball caps whatever you sell when you're at the venue that's what you want yeah you know. for sure um it's it's just the it was always going to go this way i mean it's it's fast food music mm. essentially is what it is and you know the proliferation of cheap technology um is great I've sur- I'm surrounded by it, well, relatively cheap technology right now, which has allowed me to make all this music and videos and things like that. But then there was something about um, the gatekeeper side of things, which yeah. meant that um, for better or for worse, like, dare I say, more talented people were the ones getting pushed into the limelight. I'm not saying that we would have been one of them, but um, the, just the the music that's out today, it doesn't resonate us with us yeah. at all really i think that's true of a lot of people i mean i teach a lot of kids as well um i'm a guitar teacher and none of them come in and say i want to learn the latest you know megan the stallion song or like lil nas X song or like the or katie perry song they all come in and they, they name some obscure indie artists that they want to learn and then i think they're aware that there's something just wrong with a lot of the music that's coming out, you can sort of just hear it. It's just this, oh, this fake, yeah, um, fast food music, as I said. And there's, you know, there's it's been that since the seventies. You've had like, you know, label uh, labels pushing out crap music, and most of the music in the charts has been crap. <laughs> it's just the way it is. We kind of forget that forever. But the issue is now there's also nothing good sort of being threaded in between the crap. Not 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 yeah. At least not in the mainstream, anyway. No, I think you, yeah, you're right. Mm. But it's dead easy. We've we've said it before, and the, and that's why we think we're different in, in stuff we're doing. Is and I always say on my show, if you want to listen to the same old crap, go somewhere mm. else because it's not here. You know, it's so too yeah. so easy to play the latest release from Adele or Elton John or oh God, boring. Do you know what I mean? Um, mm. It's got its time and its place, but but do something a bit different. And I think the gatekeepers, the gatekeepers are still there, stopping you getting through. So I think going back to what I was saying before, it's easy to produce. What I was trying to get at is the pool of people producing the on the indie side that's not on a on that are unsigned or emerging is yeah. massive. So yes, you can become, you can still become famous. Some people will become famous if if the right people see you or or a track comes out and it goes viral on TikTok or something. Then. Boss, you're done, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? You, you, you can be, you can be making it then. 
So it's a tough one. Just got to keep doing it. But your stuff's good. Your stuff's your stuff's good enough to be mainstream. It, it, it's main. It's, it's it's good enough to be out there as a mainstream, um, a, a mainstream band. Well, we won't have you on. We all have our people on that we think are worth worth having on. So <laughs> that's why you're here. But oh, it's going to be interesting to see what you do over the you know the next couple of years and 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 gigs. And who would you like to play with? And so you've got you you're supporting some bands or you're on with some bands tomorrow tomorrow night. You said tomorrow night, Friday night. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow night. <laughs> So, uh, so oh, who, who, I mean, who would you want to play? Because you've named a few. I mean, if someone's, if you said right, oh, we're going to support this band, which band would it be? Um, oh man, tough one. Eh? I know for Kieran, it would be the Foo Fighters. There you go. That'll do. Um, <laughs> you know why? Why not aim for the biggest band in the world? You know why not? Why not? Anything below that's a, you know what I mean. Anything know, it yeah. just, doesn't really matter then, does it? Um, the, what's the creative process then? Janice is asking. Is um, who? So create, Kieran does the writing, but the, the words. He does, he does the lyrics, and then does does someone else put the music to that? Yeah, essentially, what will you? Well, it varies sort of from song to song, but for let's say half our songs, Kieran has sent a video or a demo of him with his acoustic guitar, strumming some chords and singing a tune. Yeah. Basically, what? it's like the sort of you know skeleton of the song. And usually I'll, you know, grasp onto like a vocal hook that he's got. He usually has like you. He always has these good little licks. I'm yeah. like, that's it. That's the that's the vocal hook that that song needs. Um, and then I'll take that and I'll basically write out all the parts on Cubase. I use this like digital audio workstation software, which allows me to create like a proper band mix of what it might sound like and i'll just make up some parts for the drums and bass and guitar and i'll write some riffs and stuff and before you know it we've got essentially a fully recorded loud- demo of the song yeah that we can just go and cover it's like we're covering ourselves it's like when you're learning a song for a wedding band you listen to the song and there we kind of just learn it that way so a lot of the times we'll we'll not even write in the same room we'll we'll learn this demo that I've sort of written out on the software, so to speak, turn up, play it all the way through, and uh, then we'll adjust as we need to. With songs like like Party People, I wrote that. Um, that started very much with that guitar riff. I'm very much more instrumental. I'm not particularly good at the the vocal side of things. I leave that to Kieran. And right. like our latest song that's coming out, well, our next song that's coming out just for fun, um, I literally wrote a fully fledged out backing with riffs and like all that. It just didn't have any vocals on it. And I was like, off you go, Kieran. And he couldn't, he couldn't really think of anything because the way he writes, it's vocals first, instruments second. So it's a challenge for him sometimes. We're like, here's the instrumentals, go write oh, some vocals on top yeah, of it. It's interesting. We had the studio booked as well. And it wasn't until the day we actually went into the studio, despite weeks of rehearsal beforehand, like disagreeing on what the words and what the melody should be and stuff. He just turned up and just sung it, and we were like, "That's it, there it is." And like, the next, we're really proud of it. Funnily enough, our next song, we think is our strongest song ever. I know every Excellent. band says that, but we generally do. Like our next song, I think is going to like melt some faces. Um, and it was the most sort of like hastily written, last minute thing. So maybe there is something to like the old fashioned way of like you know Queen sort of. They just sort of sat in a studio and wrote it there and then. Yeah, like, well, I think there is something top, to that. Top deck of a bus. I think there's a few yeah. artists that have done that. I mean, like... granted, they had like six months to do it. We had about six hours, so there's a yeah. bit of a difference there. But wow, well, uh, that's fascinating. Yeah, so... It's a fascinating process. That it's interesting. Isn't it? I mean, I, I it that does it does it, it really interests me how you how a band comes up with something that's new, that's fresh and new. Do you know what I mean? It, it's it's I think it's inspiring. I, I love it. I think it's great because I can't do mm. it. I've never tried to. It's like, wow, that's amazing. It's just it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, we've never really been able to just, well, not really be able to just sit in a room and just write a song. That's at least not so far. We haven't, it's not like we're like, let's write a song. And then someone starts some, some chords and someone starts singing. That's just not how it works. Um, cause usually in that situation, there's a lot of noise and your yeah. head's a bit scrambled and you press for time cause you know, you're paying for the studio and stuff like that. Um, you need a lot more time and freedom and I'm not like improvising. Isn't like one of my strongest points. I need time to sort of think ideas through and like, let them come to me. So what will often happen is we'll come up with a really basic idea, like literally like, you know, maybe one bar of melody or like a couple of bars of a guitar riff. 
and then I'll just let that sit in my mind for like a few days or something and I'll cry I'll try and just imagine this song already exists yeah. and I'll just let it play out in my head and see what happens and I'll start writing it out on the software and it usually to a certain extent these songs write themselves once you get going um so it is a collaborative process um and it's very much that Kieran is the melody guy and I'm the instrumental guy Brilliant. um and then what will happen is Callum will put his own take on the drums and he'll he'll play stuff that I would have never written for better or for worse sometimes. And then Max is like a, a genius on the bass and he'll write these he'll just play stuff on the bass that I wouldn't have thought of. So, you know, the band really is a band. It really is the combination of four people's influences okay. and thought processes. Um which is really cool because before this, I was never in a band. I was always soloist. Um, right. So to actually be in like a musical situation where it's the combination of like four minds, like, you know, gracing the sum of its parts. And when you're playing on, when you're playing your own music on stage instead of someone else's music, it's just a really um, amazing experience and like really powerful. Okay. For one, no one knows you're making a mistake because I've never heard it before. <laughs> that's, that's a nice one. So I, can I always like that. No, it's good. And if it works for you, that if that way works, it, there's no right or wrong way. It's whatever works for people, doesn't it? So when you do whatever you're doing, if you do, do it, you know, oh, well, you should do it this way. It doesn't matter if it works, does it? It's, just, it's irrelevant. And I, I like that. I think we'll have another track. Um, got this. Always the same. Got this one. Good tune. <laughs> They're all good. <laughs> They're all good tunes, man, because this is Black Star Jackals. Have you heard of them? Brilliant. Playing tomorrow night, if you're listening live. Q to VT. Yeah. 
Was the same from Black Star Jackals. Wonderful. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, that one. Well, this one. Get you back on screen. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, cracking, cracking. Great, mate. Love it. Love them. Love them. It's wonderful. So, hey, we're up. We've done all right, haven't we? Because we've not got. We've not been interrupted, which is which is which is great. So, um, where's the best place for people to get hold of you? Where do you, where do you hang out? Is it on Twitter or is it on Facebook or what's your what's your social media platform of choice? We're on everything. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, we had generally Instagram and Twitter are probably the best place if you want to actually speak to us and like send us messages and stuff. Face for some reason Facebook these days the whole software doesn't seem to work very well, so we don't often see messages on there. So if you do want to send us a message or a tweet, then Twitter and Instagram at Blackstar Jackals is uh, is the place to go. Yeah. If you want to listen to our music, it's on all the usual places: Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music. Deezer, Tidal, you name it, it's it's all over the place. Everywhere. No, you're right about Facebook. I, it just does me. I didn't hardly go on. I try to avoid it because it's, it's like I say, it's crazy. I used to do videos on then get a couple of thousand views and put, do a video now and probably get about five, five or something, 10, 15, 20. You know, it's crazy. No no rhyme or reason for it. But never mind. It's one of those things, isn't it? One of those, reels is supposed to be good on Facebook, but do a reel, a Facebook reel rather than using one from Instagram, I believe. Anyway, so that's just something. Oh, but, but we've still got some time left, but what we've been doing, we've been asking the artists to do artist drops for us so we can turn them into jingles. So if you'd like to, if you could do us one, if you don't mind, that'd be wonderful. So, you know, this is the Black Star Jackals and you're listening to Dougie Stone Radio. Something like that. Is okay? Yeah, no problem. Over to you. Hi, this is Black Star Jackals and you're listening to Dougie Stone Radio. Perfect. I'll get Eddie on that later. He's got three to do now, so I'll keep him busy. <laughs> keep him busy. Uh, Rob Levitt, because we've took over Blues Addiction show today. Uh, he's, he's loving this track. And Rob is up in Edinburgh. So there you go, Oh, Rob. well. Get, Ed, Rob, get, get over tomorrow night. Go over to Glasgow. I know it's only down the road. Shut out your window. I might hear you. <laughs> down the road. Go and see the Black Star Jackals. They're wonderful. Wonderful. Mm. Yeah, so that that'd be a good gig for you tomorrow night. Then I suppose just get you back into it. Have you got all this? Did you say you've got all this planned after that? Or are you still? We've got all... one in um, Aberdeen. Yeah, there's no, nowhere local in Scotland apparently. No. But yeah, we're headlining a bar called Krakatoa all in right. Aberdeen on the first of April. We think we are. It could be a it could be an April Fool's joke because it's booked for the first of April. We could get there and the bar doesn't exist, but we're going there anyway. Um, so that's going to be a good gig. Anyone in Aberdeen? Come along to that. That'll be great. Uh, we're booked to do Monster Fest, which is later in the year. Yeah. Not Monster Fest. What we're talking about? Winter Storm. Monster Fest was last year. Winter Storm, which is um, a sort of classic rock festival up here in Scotland. It's great. Oh, so you've got a few, you've uh, got a few things going on then. Yeah, the gigs obviously coming out of COVID. A lot of promoters are very gingerly, you know stepping the toes back into things and uh we we haven't been getting the the gig offers that we would have got otherwise like as fast because people are just a bit reluctant and a bit afraid yeah right now to book anyone um but we're slowly getting more and more offers we're hoping we're gonna get some festivals 
um, bugged up as well. And But yeah, at the moment, they're the two main gigs, tomorrow and 1st of April, all Ooh. in Scotland. We are hoping to, um, at some point this year, maybe do like a little you know, two or three day weekender in the north of England. We're in talks with some venues there, oh, places brilliant. like Leeds and Newcastle and um, Workington and places like that. Um, that's still hypothetical right now, but at some point we will head back over the border. And uh, it's got it's got to happen, on it. It's, it's all starting to it's all starting to come together now. I think, and I think the confidence in going out and doing stuff and being around people is increasing. And uh, hopefully it'll all it'll get back to some some sort of normality to where it was before. Because it, it it's sad really because it's it's affected a lot of people. The isolation and getting back in a mm. just going to see a band in a room and uh, singing is just is a phenomenal phenomenal experience. So, yeah. Well, our our first gig post COVID was August last year, and our last one before that was in November, twenty nineteen. Um, so it was basically, wow. it was uh, you know a massive gap between our our those two gigs. Um, That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, that, so yeah. that, that wasn't long after you did did, did the old two. I mean that that old two night it was one of my mate's sixtieth birthdays. <laughs> And I had to tell my cunt cunt because I was good doing that gig. Right. <laughs> so I can't You're go. not meets anymore. <laughs> I can't go. I've got to go. Fair enough. We understand. Because, uh, right. yeah, <laughs> if you, you might not know, but I was there to support the band that won. So I was quite chuffed they won, but I was disappointed for other people. So I had to, I had to go. I've been following them for years. So it's great. Well, Someone we, had to win. Someone, yeah, someone had to win. And I think, well, but even so, what it does, and I think people miss, miss the point where they're doing things like I think, oh, what is it? You're opening, you're opening yourselves up to other people, aren't you? Because we, we know we, we, we've been following you ever since. And I, if we hadn't been in that, if you hadn't been on that um, competition, might, might have come across you at some point, but not the same sort of uh, feeling, vibe about it, if that makes sense. So I think it's worth doing stuff like that, even if sometimes you think, oh, well, what's that What's that produced? What, what's happened there? Do you know what I mean? Was it worth it? Was it worth us going? It's got to be worth it, hasn't it, to try and get your, your name out? Yeah, I mean, live gigs, that's what it's all about. I mean, there's a, another radio station up here called Cam Glenn, and we know the presenter on that stage um, station really well, Derek, because um, he met us at a gig, and we've invited him to other gigs, and, you know, that's how you build the, the real connections yeah, you get to know people is in 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 the live world. Yeah, oh definitely. And, uh, obviously, that disappeared for the past two years, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we we really struggled. Um, not least, I mean, every band struggled, but we were getting a nice, really nice momentum going. By the end, we started our first gig in March 2019, and by the end of 2019, I think we'd done 26 gigs. Yeah which for a band, a new band was pretty good going, we thought, with festivals and everything. And we took a bit of a breather at the start of 2020. Remember in the February, we were in a cafe all discussing the plans for the year and stuff, completely none, none the wiser as to what was going to happen. <laughs> and then, you know, it just um, kind of ground to a halt. So when people say, how long have you been going? It's like, I sort of a try year. and discount the COVID. It's like, well, COVID doesn't count because we weren't doing anything. So, you know... Oh yeah, Rob, three, three years, but really two years. I think. Rob's saying, have you got any plans to go to Edinburgh? Uh, not anything booked, but we often we play in a place called Bannermans. I'm sure you know as Bannermans Bar. Um, is that on Cowgate? I think it is. And um, we played there a few times. I know the the venue owner of that place, and no doubt we'll be back there. I think I know where that is. Um, Cowgate. When I went, yeah, I'm sure. I'm thinking of where that is. Yeah, yeah. cool. I'm sure. I'm um, sure he will. Rob knows everywhere, and uh, yeah, I'm sure he knows that. Oh, he knows it well. He says his name. Yeah. His name. It's, it's, well. it's all the venues are on that street. There's yeah. a place place opposite that. A big looks like a church. It's been converted into a nightclub called um, called um, uh, Stramash. Right. And I used to do um, gigs there with my function band. It started at midnight. Wow. Started at midnight and I'd be finished by about four AM. Oh no, I'd be do- I'd be um, done in by that time. But they were great gigs. It was just students. Yeah, you know, yeah, all smacked out of the brains by the, by twelve brain. o'clock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> throwing the knickers at me whilst I'm playing. You know, and that was just the lads. Shut up and dance. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Oh, so. brilliant, mate! Brilliant. Well, we're about we're about at the end of the show, and I, I've I've really enjoyed talking to you. It's a pity we didn't get all the band, but that doesn't matter. We've had the essence of the band, haven't we? And uh, I'm I'm sure we'll get to talk, talk to them again. Yeah, but... I'll call myself that from now on. The, okay, that can be my on my on my yeah, business card. The essence of the, the essence, the essence of, of the band. <laughs> Which essence? I don't know, but it is an essence. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, There's, yeah. It's fantastic. But we keep, keep in contact with us. A good luck with the gig tomorrow. I hope it we'll all. It. Well, I'm sure it'll go swimmingly. And uh, don't drink too much because, if especially we've got to drive back, we don't want you taking your hours to be getting back home. <laughs> uh, oh, you are the, the you, God help you if you're drinking driver in Scotland. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, I didn't mean it like that. I meant. St- oh, sorry. Yeah. I was referring to the last time where you had a drink and then the next day. I'm not. I'm not condoning drinking uh, and driving. Yeah. That's nuts. That's just mental if you do that. And and one of the band members is clever because he can't drive, so he's always big. He can always have a drink. I. He's always he's drunk. I've never seen him sober. To be yeah, exactly. With him, oh, I can't drive, lads. Like Gallagher can't drive. Just get everyone else <laughs> to drive you around, doesn't it? So it's uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Right, well, I think we'll wrap it up, and it's been great. Uh, pass our regards on to the rest of the band. Uh, keep in contact with us. Anything you release or you want to send to us before it's released, send it to us, and we'll and we'll give it a spin, and uh, we'll keep in touch. And hopefully, at some point, we'll we'll I'll see you again playing live. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Kirk. Thanks very Always much. A pleasure. Yeah, I'll wrap I'll wrap the show up, and I'll see you soon. So hopefully, a guy will turn up and and sort your internet out or whatever he's, he's supposed to be doing. Uh well, yeah, he's no sign of him. I'm gonna send an angry tweet to Vodafone right now. Oh, call good. them out. Oh, tweet, 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 and he's brilliant for for getting yeah, people yeah, really, to get, get you everything you want when oh, you tweet. It's, it's anger. awesome because I was doing some a bit bad. My wife's going, "What are you doing?" I'm going on Twitter. Went, "What for?" I went, "Oh, don't worry about that. I'll get it sorted on Twitter." Yeah. <laughs> don't the inbox you. What's your problem? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> can you, you take it? Tw- can you take that tweet down now? Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> now yeah. you fixed it. But anyway, it's been the Black Star Jack. Because I'm gonna finish off with down the road. We've not had that one yet, have we? Because I've moved some tracks around. I don't think we've mm. had that track. So uh, say hello to the band and keep your Dougie Stone radio and we'll speak to you soon, hopefully. Cheers. Don't take me down this road We've been here before, I know Awesome.
Jackal, there you go. That was the Black Star Jackals on Dougie Stone Radio's introducing how good are they. Uh, go and check them out. Obviously, if, you, if you're if you up in Scotland, go and see them. No doubt they're going to come down to the UK. To, you, well, you, it's all UK, isn't it? Down to England. They're going to cross the border. We'll let them across. Uh, but they're wonderful. I think they're great. And like I say, I've been rocking them with them since 2019. I think they're, they've got what it takes. And that's what frustrates me. We do talk to a lot of bands. And all the bands we're bringing on these shows, we believe you should know about, you should be following, and have all got the capability to become um, main, mainstream, if that's not a, that d- a dirty word to them. But anyway, I'm going to get out of there. Thanks to uh, Stephen and the rest of the band. That was an absolutely wonderful uh, interview and great to see where they've got from 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 uh, 2019. Keep it Dougie Stone Radio. Just say Alexa Open Internet Radio. Go to DougieStoneRadio.com. And don't forget our breakfast shows, Monday to Friday, 8 till 10. I do them. And then Mr King does Saturday and Sunday. Until next time, see ya. <laughs>